the studio display. This is Apple's new standalone monitor. They've made a standalone desktop called the Mac Studio. We're going to be dropping a video on that here very soon. So stay tuned for that one. This is the monitor to go with it. So essentially what we've got is the new 27-inch iMac. Instead of bringing out a replacement for the aging i5, i7, they brought out a 24-inch that upgraded from 21 and a half. So they went for the middle and that's the mainstream all-in-one display for average users. And then they said, okay, if you want something a little bit more powerful, we're going to do something that's basically more like the iMac Pro, where we're going to make the 27-inch iMac a better device for a creative professional. And rather than do it in a single all-in-one, we're going to split it into two. Right now, you'd be about $35-ish, $100 if you go with a 27-inch display with the $2,000 base model Mac Studio. So definitely more than the old iMacs, but not much more than if you spec an iMac out at 32 gig with a chip that has the high-end performance of an M1 Max. That said, already some of the reviewers out there are saying, look, this is a 27-inch iMac display. Basically, it's the same panel. The one they've been using for the last few years. Yeah, they might have just tweaked it a little bit, but it's essentially the same. Now they're charging $59.99 just for the screen on its own. They've taken all the insides out, and it's the same price. I see the logic in that. It's got the built-in webcam. It's taken a little bit of hit with some of the early reviews, but Apple is saying that it's a software issue and that they're going to fix it. And the webcam is probably going to be similar quality to a MacBook Pro once the update comes out. But here's what's interesting. I've had plenty of 27-inch iMacs. They never looked like this. So I don't know what voodoo they are doing, but by golly, do those blacks look black. And my MacBook Pro screen does not look as black as this. It almost looks like an OLED. Just first glance, haven't had a lot of time with it. The blacks look black. And now the blacks on my 16-inch look gray. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how they're doing it. From a fit and finish perspective, Holy, did I tell, did I say holy moly enough? Holy moly, this thing is beautiful. Again, I've heard criticism about why is it so fat? Why isn't it thinner? What do you want, people? You want another 24-inch iMac? I kind of like this industrial design. It feels more like I'm ready for business. Like I put a bit of bulk on. I'm muscled up because I'm here to work on serious stuff. The thickness undoubtedly lets air flow well, which means the speakers flow well, which means we get great audio. And as it turns out, this thing is running a full-on Apple chip inside. And from what I've been reading, as I've been excited, waiting for the UPS guy to show up today with my toys, this is running a full version of iOS, like the monitor, just to run and do its, do its gubbings. No power button, just like my AirPods Max. It just turned on magically when I opened the laptop. I'm assuming it's going to do the same when I turn it off. Haven't tried it yet. So let's try it. Laptop closed. So I guess I've got to actually put it to sleep. That's okay. I can live with that. Don't be hating on it. It feels very weightless, very effortless as I move backwards and forwards. This is the base model monitor. You can pay another $400 and you can get the, the height adjustable tilt if you would like to. I didn't like to. And so I got the base model here, but it feels great. Everything about this screams premium. The box and unboxing was just glorious. Nothing comes close. The quality and the premium feel, I don't know what they pay for those boxes, but these are not $10 boxes off Amazon. I'm just throwing it out there. They probably spend a fair amount of money just on that cardboard. The edges, the contours, the curved corners, Sticking with that tried and tested kind of flat flush metal here. If you see it on the stand, I know I've got a cable in front of it. I mean, it, it is like a 24-inch iMac on steroids. I don't know how else to describe it. Completely flat on the back. And I guess, you know, this is where you start asking the question, right? Is the jump from the 24-inch iMac to this setup worth it? Think about it. 1500 bucks for an M1 iMac. It's 24 inch, a little bit smaller. It's thin, it's light. Beautiful colors, everything's in the box, and you're good to go. Yes, it's lower in performance, but you can still customize the spec and move up. It's a big jump to go from $15.99 or wherever you end up, $17.99, sub $2,000. Now, 
you probably don't need a Mac Studio. So you could pick up an M1 Mac Mini, $7.99, but they're on sale everywhere for $6.99. I've seen them today for $5.99. At $5.99, it's, it's a bargain. But are you going to pair it with a $1,600 monitor just because it looks amazing? I don't know. That still puts you over $2,100. That feels rich for that base model. But compared to $1,599 for the 24-inch iMac, it's only about another $500, and you'd have a bigger screen that actually I think is higher quality and looks better. I mean, looks way better. Magnificent sounding speakers with that little M1 Mac. That could be the sweet spot for that $2,000-ish price point that a lot of people want to hit. And then you jump into the mid threes for the power users, the creatives, and everything else. So something that's not quite incredible, no promotion. No 120 hertz. Now, I can understand that on a low-end device, but I don't know that this would be classed as a low-end device. It is in Apple's world. If you want the Pro monitor, it's $6,000. But it's still $15.99, and that's a whole lot of money. And it doesn't even go 120 hertz. No smooth scrolling, like my iPad, at $7.99 or $9.99 or $10.99, whichever one you want to buy. I think it's a bit of a glaring omission. You know, do they care? Probably not. Is next generation going to have it? Probably. Did they hold it back? Eh, maybe. But I think it should have been there. You can definitely get monitors with it, probably with OLED, for the same money or less, that are going to look better from a screen perspective. However, the thing with Apple devices, and you should know this by now if you are looking at Apple devices, they are somehow more than the sum of their parts. It's not enough to look at the Lego set on the floor and say, if I put all these blocks together, I'm going to get X. There is a magical voodoo that happens that makes X somehow look like Y. And it's a little bit more polished. It's a little bit smoother. It's a little bit prettier. It's a little bit sturdier. It's a little bit longer lasting. It holds its resale a little bit better. And that's the magic of Apple. But let me tell you what's not magic. The glare on that screen. Holy moly, is this sucker shiny. I mean, if I had hair, I would be doing my hair in this monitor. It's incredibly reflective. Yes, I'm in the studio. Yes, I've got some lights going on. It's very, very shiny, people. If you're going to sit with this, with natural light behind you, or a lot of bright lights, yes, you may have to spend the money and get the fancy schmancy nano texture display. But hey, it's okay. It's only another four or five hundred bucks. No big deal. I'll take two of them. Just, just do one on the back for me as well, Mr. Apple. I got money coming out my ears. Okay, I was wrong. The four or five hundred was the nano texture display with the tilt adjustable thing as well. So it's only three hundred dollars to get just the nano texture if you just want to upgrade the screen and stop the reflectivity. And yes, that really is a word. Dude, they got some bass out of this thing. Okay, now you're watching. Can't feel this. But my table is actually vibrating with the bass that's coming out of that monitor. I do not know how they're doing that out of something so thin, but that would explain the thickness of the screen, I think. Because they're clearly pushing air movement through the chassis of this bad boy. I can only tell you so much. The sound's incredible. The screen looks incredible. The physical fit and finish is incredible. This is an incredible monitor, but it has an incredible price. Let me know what you think. Drop your comments down below. And don't forget, Be Amazing t-shirts are now available. Hit that subscribe button. Till next time, you are amazing.